Hello and welcome back to a brand new Player 2 review discussion. Today I'm joined by, as I won't go as far as say always, we've we've been shaking things up a little bit lately, but I've brought back Editor-in-Chief and Player 2 legend Matt Hewson. How are you, mate? Good, mate. Good. It's uh, certainly more fun to do this at work than actual work, so... <laughs> Look, we'll, we'll do more of them if you want. We'll, we'll make do. <laughs> We're all getting dressed up for the occasion, so... Yes, yes. Yeah, work, work uniform, not my usual uh, Metallica t-shirts, so... <laughs> That's right, we're just uh, showing how seriously we're taking Forza Horizon 5. Uh, we're going to talk about that game in a bit of depth. You, you and I have both received a code. Thank you to Xbox locally for providing us that. And we've been checking the game out and thought we'd share some of our thoughts in sync with when your review will go live on the Player 2 website in, I guess, as of when we record this, still a few days from now. Yeah, still a few days away. But uh, And, you know, I've still got a few more days of play to get into the game. But, jeez, it's good. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm a convert. Yeah, yeah we were talking about this actually in in the chat last night. Like, and maybe it was even just kind of some misinformation on my on my part that like I just kind of bundled the Forza Horizon games in the the driving basket, not necessarily driving sim, but you know, even you know, driving arcade. Where, like, just driving games aren't really my thing. Mm. Um, and I guess still at its core, you know, it's it's a racing or like a, a driving game. Sorry, I should correct myself. I was calling it a racing game. Yeah, yeah. And it's not about that. I guess there's racing components, but that's not really the core of the experience here. And that's, this has been a revelatory experience for me, just kind of getting my head around what Forza, Ac- Forza Horizon actually is. And I'm totally on board. Oh, it's it's like, it, it's kind of annoying to me that I've been banging on about this and you're still, <laughs> you're only just going now. But <laughs> it's because of that bias that I had. Yeah. That racing yeah, games get out of here. Yeah. Probably hadn't given me the is, time of day. The thing is with Forza Horizon, it's especially even more so with number five, is it's almost an RPG with cars. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's an adventure. It's not it's a driving adventure, it's not a racing game. There's racing in it, absolutely, but they're more like side quests, you know. Yep. All these little quests on the map that you've got to do, they just happen to be races or, you know, there might be some crazy stunt or it might be go over here and photograph this weird thing or there's just the variety in a driving game is is unparalleled. There's there's nothing else on the market like it, and and that that could be said about Forza, Forza Horizon Four. Uh, Five yeah. just takes that to the next level. So it's how they keep improving is beyond me. Uh, that surely there has to be a ceiling at some point. Well, but, I mean, as someone who's played quite a few of them now, like what what are some of the key changes and things that you've observed? Okay, so the big big changes in this uh, um, edition are the inclusion of uh, these gigantic weather events. Um, yeah. Oh, the sandstorms so and whatnot. the sandstorms and the tropical cyclones, or they call them monsoons or something like that. Um, that northern hemisphere speak. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which are amazing to drive in. They are like graphically amazing and actually really cool to drive in and really you know uh, mix things up when you're driving. Obviously, being set in Mexico, the weather changes that you got in with each season in England are a little less dramatic. Yep. Um, you're obviously not going from sun to snow here, um, but there is certainly snow uh, on the higher peaks and around the volcanoes. Um, yeah, and they, like the and, very first, the very first sequence at the beginning of the game, they drop you like right by a caldera, and like, all right, yeah, this, this yes. is pretty cool. And you hammer down that. Excuse me. Um, but I think the probably for me is the structure of the game has changed a little bit this year, or uh, well, this edition. Before you used to kind of just get every level, they'd open up more races and more events and more things to do. Now you're kind of more focused on building the Forza Horizon Festival, which is kind of the basis yeah. for everything. And uh, you've got like five different uh, types of events essentially, and each has its own base within the map of Mexico. And as you go, you gradually unlock events for that base and you can pick which one you want to focus on. If you want to do all the dirt events straight up, absolutely then your choice. It. If you want to do all the stunt events with the you know the speed cameras and the jumps and all that, you can do that first, go for it. And as you unlock, each of them you, has a final boss, a boss fight, but uh, you know, a kind of ultimate race at the end. Yeah. And last night I uh, got to the ultimate race for the first, the Forza Horizon um, road racing section. And it's called the Gauntlet. And it was a 
It was just shy of 20 minute race in an A wow, class yeah. car. And it's called the biggest race in Forza Horizon history. And it literally takes you from one end of the map to the other and you get to go all around the map and it's a full lap essentially of the whole map. And it was such a fantastic drive. In these kind um, of boss, you know, these boss encounter yeah. races, like, do you get to still use the rewind function that they've, you know, yeah. that's there? Okay, cool. It's all there. I mean, I haven't, well, that's... I haven't got, like, I've tried, like, lots of different things so far. Yeah. But I haven't dedicated myself to a single, okay, I'm going to pursue this pathway yet. Yeah, so they, um, still everything how you want it. Like, the rewind feature's there if you want it. Uh, you can turn it off in the menu. Um, Forza Horizon's always been super accessible, but also super catering to the hardcore Forza, like traditional Forza fan yeah. that wants to twiddle with, fiddle with gear ratios and, and, you know, turn off any assists and all that sort of stuff. They can do that or they can just, you know, whack it in easy and, and hammer a car around a track. Um, I tend to play about normal, um, normal mode just because that seems to be the nice balance for me yeah. to have a bit of fun and still have some challenge. Um, so everything in these boss battles, there's some boss battles you get to ch choose your car like you normally would in a race and you can pick whatever car you want and the race will adjust to that. So for example, if you want to race in a Subaru, um, it'll only include cars that are equal to that Subaru. So you'll see lots of Lancers, you'll see lots of rally style yeah. cars and that'll match up and they, horses, they won't be and all that. Yeah. Yeah. But if you pick, you know, an Aston Martin, you're going to get a lot of GT cars in, in your race as well. Um, so it's, it, it adjusts to what you want to drive. And that's also very cool because some of those supercars, they're really fun, but they're really hard to control because yeah. you're going at, you know, 350 K an hour. Um, so sometimes on those bigger races, you want a slightly underpowered car because you'll enjoy the event more and you won't be crashing and yeah, okay. jamming that, that re rewind button as much. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, yeah. it might be because I'm you know fairly inexperienced with when it comes to any form of racing or driving driving mm. uh, games, but I've been smashing that rewind a bit. <laughs> you get used getting to better. I'm getting better. Um, certainly, like, getting the hang of things. I certainly don't need to do it all that often anymore, but... Um, early days i've been working on this <laughs> knowing your car is a big part of it too because each of the cars are very unique uh they, they handle they've, they've put a lot of effort into making the cars feel and sound like they would in the real world yeah as, mu as much as possible you know um so for example you know a subaru is going to be great in a rally events um but it's probably going to get torn off in a, in a road event so you need to switch cars up for those or if you want to just use rally cars in your road events you can and Forza will cater to that so you know if you want to race in big old trucks you can do that too you do you uh, yeah pretty much that's, and I mean, that's every, cool. everything you do this time uh, around also uh, heads towards your kind of a horizon level yep. um, so in previous games that wasn't so much but now there's kind of they kind of they, in the last game there was in the Lego DLC there was kind of all these little mini goals you can achieve you know do a certain amount of drifts or wreck a certain amount of things or you know that sort of thing yeah with you. so they've kind of souped up that system in this game and uh each of those gives you a, like a little bonus towards your horizon level and so if you just want to burn around and, and do silly stuff that'll still help you progress in the yeah. game um also give you gifts and cars and wheel spins and all those sort of things that, that you get yeah all the little handy perks you get for every level yeah. you unlock or you know the, the normal fare i guess anyone who's been playing live service games these days knows, knows exactly how uh, all that works or competitive multiplayer everything's got levels these days and those little yeah. basic rpg systems that are all implemented so and generally i'm not a fan of random loot box style situations but the the wheel spins in fours are always so generous like yeah okay you get them Every time you turn around, you get a new wheel spin. You log in after a week and you haven't played it, you get some more wheel spins because they say, hey, welcome back, here's some wheel spins. You know, they, they are it's pretty just good doled like out. I have noticed yeah, just, a little bit of that so far. It's far smaller scale, but I have noticed that sort of thing going yeah. on. Yeah. So even now, if I were to log into Forza Horizon 4, they go, you haven't played it for a month. Here's some wheel spins, have some fun. Um, you know, so it's, it's pretty hard to be upset with a random system that is so incredibly generous. And there's not a lot of useless crap on there like yep. you get in a lot of random systems you know it's either money or it's your new car or or some new clothes for your avatar or something like that but yeah it, it feels a lot fairer than most of them what do you think about the terrain that we're actually moving through now obviously you've mentioned kind of the sandstorms the 
the cyclones slash monsoons, all the, all of those sort of things, but just the actual sights of the place. And obviously it's something that, uh, especially in the Horizon games, because I think there's only so much you can do with motorsport in terms of, you know, putting you on a track and kind of that yeah. simmy sort of style. But uh, as much as I hadn't been playing them, I was always struck by what was being delivered through, you know, Forza Horizon 3 set here in Australia or 4 in Europe. Even even the Lego mode, which looked unbelievably good in 4. I watched the Play 2 plays that I think Matto put together for that and was yeah. completely mind-blown by that. And now actually getting to Play 5 and just taking it all in and look they re- like i said with the cult air at the very beginning they set it all up perfectly their framing of all the shots were great but it is starting to navigate through this world so forza good looking game right uh i mean i think probably along with flight simulator it's uh, a technical achievement that hasn't been matched yet um graphically That's uh, on consoles uh, i mean pcs Obviously, can push things a little bit further, but even then, I don't think there's much on. Are they the PC being tested would... in the same way? Probably not. No, they're not. They're probably held back a little bit by console game development. You know, there's very few dedicated PC uh, games yeah. out there that push push graphics. So, Flight Simulator's obviously one, but they somehow managed to get that on the Series X um, and and the Series S. But Forza Horizon Five has the most stunning scenery and an amazing photo mode that I've been using like a lot. To get yeah, okay. I've, I've missed too much around with that, but it does look amazing. Yeah, and there's just some stunning, like you go from jungle to the beach, and and the way weather works, and everything about it. And like this even is as you the pass through some engine. little built-up areas as well, like that, even yeah. they look fantastic, and the way just the way they've been designed as well. And it's very uh, cool to see like the Mexican sort of um, street art and things like that. That's very clear on the buildings yeah. and and all that sort of stuff. It's uh, it's really amazing to think this is on the old tech too. So this is on the uh, so Forza Motorsport has rebooted to use a brand new engine created from the ground up for the Series X. Yeah. Forza Horizon Five is still using the same engine they used to create Forza Horizon Four. So <laughs> to think it's looking this good without the upgraded engine, um, it speaks volumes to what's to come. It does, yeah, and. I'm running it on the the quality mode. It runs at 60 frames and oh, sorry, 30 frames in ray tracing, yeah. um, which is perfect, I reckon, uh, for the racing game. It's it's not so much of a big deal for the 60 frames. I don't think, especially when you get such like enhancements from the ray tracing in yeah. the weather, it looks just amazing. Um, I might I've been have playing to on this mode and try it out. Yeah, I've been playing I'm, it on I'm PC as performance well. Performance or whatever, whatever the. Was it called performance mode? I can't remember, but yeah, the, the performance mode anyway. Which is 60 frames, no yep. ray tracing. I've been playing on my PC uh, as well, and just on my laptop, which is a fairly beefy laptop. It's got a 2070 in it, um, and with the ray tracing on, uh, but on, only at 2K, um, and it runs at like 60 easy, 60 frames a second easy on the PC. Uh, it's really customizable. We tried it on a few different systems. Um, and, and settings and things, and it works really well. I think it's going to surprise people about how uh, well it scales to different systems. Yeah, I mean, I it's still got to work be... on an Xbox One, for example. Like it's yeah, it's got and to I think run that's... a fair gambit. And I mean, considering how good look Forza Horizon Four looked on the Xbox One, uh, there's no reason this won't look as least at least as good as that, if not better. Um, it's a really stable and well built game, like a technical achievement. And, and it gives me a lot of hope for Fable, to be honest. You know, if they yeah. can manipulate this engine in such a way, then it makes me think that, um, that at least the technical side of Fable is going to be very, very good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, look, don't, let's not talk too much about Fable because I'll just get too yeah. excited and it's still probably so far away. <laughs> still, still at least two years away. But, uh, I mean, yeah, you're right. Look, it, it looks sensational. And as you said, like, oh, and as I said, I've only been playing on performance so far, but I'm with that knowledge in mind and again just not being the, the greatest racing aficionado so not necessarily knowing what sort of impact uh, 30 versus 60 would have the fact that you're telling me 60 is not going to have any sorry 30 is not going to have any bearing on the the experience then maybe I'll flick it back to, to quality mode and try it out with all the ray tracing all the fancy effects and really yeah. see what else they, they can do there because obviously that's one of the big pushes this gen and it'd be nice to see the game at its absolute best yeah and it really is like a, just a stunning game and it's leading the way in a lot of areas technically um, yep. 
and it just happens to have an amazing driving game that go along with all that tech wonder. Yeah, is there is there, is there anything that's missing in your eyes? Not really, I, I I I can't think of it. I said that after um, probably after Horizon Four. 4. <laughs> yeah, you know, like how do you improve on this? Horizon Four, for a bit of context, was our first ever A plus. Yeah, on Player Two, um, and this game's better. So, like, so you're showing your hand here, right? I mean, do people even need to go check out the website now? No, click through. Serious. Um, it's uh, like they just know how to make an engaging experience. Um, and like you said, it's it's the driving game for everyone. Yeah, it's got it's got me in now. You know, people that don't like racing games, people that don't like if you've ever thought the idea of driving a car was enjoyable in any way, shape, or form. This is the game for you. Like, you would have to just hate cars with a passion to not enjoy yeah. this game. Because okay. the game caters for you how you want to play. It, it gives you a challenge if you want it, or if it just lets you enjoy yourself yeah, in a really else expensive so car. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that is a lot of fun too. And driving around and finding all these little land landmarks and things from Mexico. I'm not sure of the accuracy of the map, it's probably a bit of a situation like the Australia map was where they just jammed a whole bunch of areas yeah. that are famous from Australia here's, into here's one key map. Points and let's... Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm assuming it's like that. But uh, they're actual volcanoes and they're actual Incan ruins and Incan or Aztec? Aztec? I can't remember. Incan, I think. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not the I, I, think, I think that was North Inca was North. I'll, I'll get told I'm wrong. But, you know. Um, and the then there's actual cities. Yeah, uh, it's it's just yeah, wonderful, wonderful game. And look, it, it's it's showing a really good start to this kind of generation uh, for Microsoft systems that they can produce a game of this quality. I know it's an old old faithful that they've brought back to win, um, but you know what? It's a really good way to kick things off. Yeah, I mean they're, this year, they're just lining their dominoes up and buying time for all the other the other studios to do their thing. Hell, Halo is now yeah. only a few weeks away as well, so like they're starting to get rolling. Even this uh, yeah. PlayStation or so Sony Pony can't you know ignore the fact that they're they're stacking the deck nice and early. So good on your yeah. Xbox. It's it's, it's nice to see um, after being a long like I prefer PC gaming in general, but my console habits have always tended towards Xbox because they like their controller better. Yep. Um, so it's nice to see after many years of struggling that they've had a pretty good year for exclusives. Yep. So, And it's only looking like it's getting better and, and Forza is going to be pretty hard. I mean, between this and Psychonauts, which is also another Xbox Studio game, even though it ended up on PlayStation, uh, I think it's one of these two is going to be my game of the year and I, I can't work out which one it's going to be at this point. And obviously for totally different reasons, but... Yeah, you got some time really to good. decide, and again, it, there is there is the chief. That there is Halo. In, yeah, chief and can then, come in and blow the whole thing up on you. So, and after that last trailer, it's looking pretty darn good too. So, Xbox is in a good place. Yeah, nice and to I, see. I guess as we wrap things up, we should again thank Xbox Australia for providing us both codes for the game. There, it's allowed you to try it out on PC and on Xbox. I've been playing on the Xbox Series X. Um, both of us having a great time. Matt, your review will be up on the Play Two website now, as of when people. For checking out this Watch video this. So, yep. so go jump over then we might even throw the link in the comments there make sure you jump across to the website and go have a look there because i mean we've kind of shown your hand already i guess it's probably you're probably going to slap an a plus on it at this rate yeah I still mean, time look, to come. we won't, I won't I've, I've, put you in a spot but i've put about just shy of 20 hours into it now um and i'll probably put another at least another 10 in before i write but Jesus Christ, I'd have to fumble the ball pretty bad in that next 10 hours. Yeah. And I think the nature of the experience means it's probably yeah. not going to deviate too much. So no, no, I, I think, think we so. kind of know where that review is going to land. But again, go check it out on the Player 2 website. Uh, Matt, where should people go to catch up with you and what, they're up, and what you're up to? Uh, well head over you. to ESO81 on Twitter. I am a bit quiet at the moment because I'm living at a farm with dodgy internet. Uh, so that's the, that's the circumstances that we're we're doing today. So yeah, yeah, yeah work. doing it at work. Um, so things are a bit quiet there at the moment, but you can find everything I do on Player Two AU as well on the Twitter or obviously the website. Paul James Games for myself. That was another review discussion. I hope you, the viewer slash listener, enjoyed it. Uh, I'm sure there'll be more to come. There's a lot of big releases still rolling out. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you later. Catch you next time.